Now we're going to get into sub bass. The first one we're going to start off with is a patch in Operator, and then later on I'm going to teach you guys how to make a sub drop patch in Native Instruments Massive. So we have our main bass here that's done in Razor, and we've run everything through this effects chain. But we have one problem with this effects chain. We have Camel Fat that's putting a whole bunch of distortion on the entire output of the bass. And normally if you want a really powerful, clean sounding sub that's going to work well on big systems, is you don't want to add a whole heck of a lot of distortion. You might want like a little bit of saturation, a little bit of harmonics, but definitely not that really heavy mech distortion that we were using on the main bass. So what I want to use is an operator underneath Razor playing the same notes, but just running a little bit more of a basic sub bass patch. So the fact that we have this already in an instrument rack is really going to help us out here because what we can do is just add in another chain. So we can go up to instruments, when we can grab operator right here. We're going to throw in a basic version of operator. And we're going to start off by renaming this sub. I always do my sub in purple and my main bass here in blue. And I'm going to solo this so you can hear what this sounds like. Okay, so that's Operator playing a basic sine wave. And we only need one voice, so I'm going to put it voices in one. It's going to put it in mono. And we can play our clip here to see what this is going to sound like. And we can hear already we're going to have a bit of a problem. Operator is too high. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that we're running everything in MIDI here versus audio. And we're going to grab a MIDI pitch plugin which is going to drop it down by 12 semitones. So that's going to put it nicely into the sub range for us. Now, a lot of people use sine waves for their sub, but more recently I've been actually using a milder square wave because I find the sine wave works very well on large systems, but it has trouble cutting through on smaller systems that have difficulty producing these deep sub bass tones. A square wave tends to be a little bit more aggressive, has a bit more of a high frequency content in it. So I'm going to switch the waveform here to one of the squares. So you see immediately we have a very different sound. I'm just going to try out a couple of the different square waveforms. I like the most basic one here, the square three. So that's what I'm going to start with. Now, we also need to set, because we have pitch bands going on here, we need to set operator to have a similar response to the pitch band wheel as Massive does, or as Reactor with Razor does, because we don't want the pitch bands sounding different. We need them to sound like they're one instrument together. So how we do that is we click on the global shell. These guys here are all called shells. Filter shell, LFO shell. So we click on the global shell right down here, and you can see pitch is plus or minus 5 semitones. And if you recall from when we were doing Razor, it was plus or minus 12, which is a full octave. So we need to increase this to 12 semitones. And this should sound much better. Okay. Next thing is, we also had some glide going on with Razor. If we go here, we open Razor. You can see the glide parameter right here is active. We can't see exactly how many milliseconds it is. It's just a parameter number. But we're going to take a guess. And I'm going to go over to Operator. And we click on the Pitch shell. We can enable Glide, which is basically sliding between notes. Check this out if I play some MIDI notes in. It just goes instantaneously from one to the other. If we turn Glide on, they're going to kind of slide into each other, which is very important for this sound. And how long it takes for one to slide to the next is based on this time parameter. I'm going to take solo off so I can hear both. Maybe drop it down a little closer to 100. Good. 
I like that. Next thing we're going to do with our operator sub patch is we are going to grab a couple of effects. So we're going to take first and foremost a saturator, and we're going to take the preset warm up lows. We're going to throw that on right after it. Now we don't want too much here, which is why I'm glad the saturator has the wet dry. We just want to give it just a little bit. We want to keep the sub relatively clean. And we're going to dial down the frequency to right around 60 hertz. Now we want to throw an EQ on here. So we're going to use a EQ8. And we're going to put that right after the saturator. And we're going to take this EQ slot, we're going to throw it into a low pass mode. And just let most of the sub through. Now it's important when we are running these two patches together that we also high pass what's coming out of Razor. So I'm going to take an EQ8 as well. And I'm going to high pass Razor, but I'm going to high pass it before the compressor and the limiter so that we're actually only compressing the audible signal. And I'm going to high pass at the same frequency as we are low passing the other one at. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to click here. I'm going to go macro. And I'm going to macro that frequency knob to this macro slot. And I'm going to go down to the chain that's on the operator. I'm going to macro that to the same macro knob. And that way their crossover points are going to be identical. So we can type in, for example, 120. And you'll see here, this EQ is low passing at 120. If we go up to Razor, this is high passing at 120. So this should be operating much more effectively now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a utility plugin to put our sub into mono, because I always use mono for my subs and for my kick drums. We're going to take utility. We're going to throw it just after the EQ8. We're going to take the width parameter all the way down to zero. And then we are going to add in a little bit of compression. We're going to add in the compressor plugin. And we are going to add that right there. And we're just going to solo the sub. And we'll dial in some compression settings here. We're not getting any compression at all. You can't see any gain reduction. So we're going to start dropping the threshold. And again, we're not looking for tons of compression here, just a little bit. Try backing off the attack a bit, see how that sounds. And that's about how I would leave the sub bass for the operator.